Hello everybody, it's Alabama Deep coming back at you. So we are at this point in time looking at this uh, 1400 Rolex movement. Typically female watch, ladies watch. And I'm going to be seeing if I can't get it to run a little bit better today. Um, I am wearing today, of course, my Rolex Precision Air King that I had completed in one of my other videos. It's ticking along just nicely. And I really am enjoying wearing it. So, okay. We're going to be diving in to this particular watch. 1400 Rolex movement complete it has a little bit of issue it wants to get stuck as I have noticed this was a buy off of eBay it was $54 and you can't go wrong with that can you <laughs> oh, absolutely not uh, this movement I've seen it for sale elsewhere up to $700 it just really depends on who the seller is in this particular case this was a bid on eBay there were no other interested parties at the time and I simply just lucked out on it and that's all I can say uh, I have a little bit of watch oil here we're going to be tinkering with this I'm going to go ahead and get ready to dive right into it. First things first, let me look over here at what I have as far as containers go. I need a container to, when I am done with this watch, that I can put it into the container and keep other dust and debris out of it. And I think I have found such a container. It is right here with me. I think we'll be able to put it into there. Uh, I think it will fit snug to keep it safe and sound. And we can ditch the plastic black box that it originally came in because it is absolutely filthy. And, you know, I think I'm going to change out watches today because I have quite a large collection of them. Um, and so being a watch, watch guru, I want to consider wearing a different particular watch today. I'm not sure which yet. i got so many I can choose from. Um, but getting back to the matter at hand, we see this particular watch. You know, it wants to run. And then it just kind of just stops, you know. So... We're definitely going to be uh, seeing if we can't free that up a little bit. I'll put my glasses on. I'm coming into it. And one thing I'd like to go ahead and mention to everybody, and hey, you know, I apologize for this and everything, and I know it's supposed to be part of uh, preparation for you to, when you do a video, especially as a watchmaker, that you need to pay special consideration and care to your hands and I understand that at times people don't pay attention to that and so on and so forth but let me assure you that I do um, I wanted to explain just in case any rude comments come out that I do pay potential uh, special consideration to my hands, but also I want people to keep in mind I am a working man. Um, I not only deal with people in an office setting that's supposed to be very professional and accurate, but at the same time, uh, I am also an auto mechanic. I am also a home builder. I fix just about anything. And I don't mind showing you before we begin and before people notice, as I'm sure they have in my other video, that my fingernails have this crust on them. 
Uh, this is from, if anyone is familiar with the window expander, great stuff. Comes in a can. It is expanding foam for windows, cracks, and crevices. Uh, that stuff is extremely, extremely hard to get off of anything. I am having the hardest time getting that crap off my hand. It is going on three weeks. I have used gas. I have used paint thinners, acetones. I've I've used it all. This stuff is taking forever to come off my my fingers. Now all my hands it's, it's coming off, and it's just about all gone. However, the fact remains that it is stuck to my fingernails, and yeah, it sucks. So if anyone's doing any type of window work or sealing up any cracks or crevices in their older home like we possess, um, I would suggest you wear some gloves. My original thought was on wearing gloves that the latex or the plastic or the rubber, whichever the case may be, for which other, other glove I buy, is that it would get stuck to the can, rip the gloves, and then I'd have an even bigger mess. Well, I have found out through my own neandering experience that perhaps I should have worn gloves because this stuff is awful. Oh, it works great on everything. It works great at stopping the cracks and you know cracks and crevices from air coming in. It's perfect for that. Works as a great insulation. But guess what? It doesn't come off the hands. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Uh, you know, um, I've used it in the past for other projects that I've had, um, but it never came in contact with my skin. Um, in this particular case, I'm putting in a window. Um, I'm sealing up some drafty areas in our house and uh, pulling down the crown molding because the ceilings and the walls in our house, there's a, about a half inch gap or quarter inch gap between the ceilings and the walls and heat was escaping those cracks. So in order to seal it better, to keep more heat in our house and reduce our uh, energy bill, I use the great stuff. And I will say great stuff helped a tremendous amount. I can notice a difference already. Almost immediately, I noticed some results. However, once again, it does not come off the hands. So, yeah. To anyone out there using great stuff, it is wonderful. Wear gloves. Because no matter what you think, oh, I'll just get it off my hands with some gas. Because we all know gas will eat anything. Uh, no. It will not do the same on the great stuff. You'll get a majority of it off, like I did, because it was caked on there. But the end result is is that it turns brown and yellow. It makes you look like you have some type of nail fungus going on. And it makes your hands look nasty and grody, even though they're really not. So I'm pointing that out to everyone in this video now before comments come down below of, ooh, your fingers. Well, you know, pardon me. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I work on cars. I work on my house. You know, I'm a hands-on weekend warrior and I apologize profusely to anyone out there who was offended by the maintenance <laughs> leftovers on my hands. So we'll just go ahead and say that right now. But okay, uh, let's get into what we're doing. I'm coming in, I'm taking a look-see at this watch. Something's ticking somewhere else. And I think it's my Bulova. You know what? Hey, I got ADD, guys. So I'm going to look at this real quick. I noticed on this Bulova in the episode I just did, introducing my new uh, projects coming up, that there's some writing on the inside of this Bulova case. And I'm going to also inform everyone it's hard for me to use these tools. I have 
a uh, disease that's destroying my joints and my body. It's an autoimmune disease, and my goodness, it's taking its tolls. It's so hard to work on these watches at this point, but I still enjoy it, so I do it. Uh... Yeah, I just had a look at this case. Oh, it's doing quite well. Okay, I just had a look at that. Just for a minute, even. Okay, so getting back into this. Let's come in and let's inspect what we have. Okay. So first thing I see is really nothing it looks like it's in really good shape but you know the oils on the inside and everything I love this movement. Swiss, Rolex, 1400, Geneve. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. So, I see a couple areas of contact. And I'm not going to break this watch down. I'm just going to tinker with it. This is kind of what this video is. We're going to tinker with it. Everyone likes to tinker, right? I know I do. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to tinker with it. Too much oil, I think, there. Definitely too much oil. I think I'm flooding it at this point. I'm trying, I'm trying a uh, Phillips head screwdriver this go around. And yeah, that's just flooding it. I don't need that much of anything on there. Oh, goodness, this has moved. Okay. <sighs> oh, I want to keep going. Could it possibly be it just need a little bit of oil? Probably a full breakdown would be best for this watch. It wants to go. Hey, it's not stopping anymore. How's that? I see the escape wheel is moving. Hmm. This watch doesn't really look all that dirty. It looks like it was serviced not long ago. Maybe in the last five years. Maybe. Jump. Again, I know that's a long time, but look at it. I mean, results speak for itself. The damn thing hasn't stopped yet. Uh, so, okay, we're going to keep playing with it.
a little bit of oil there, a little bit of oil there. Look at that. Okay. It's still going. I do see... Hey, you know. It's going. You know, that was kind of my main thought, really, looking at this watch at this point, is that, hey, you know... Um, it came to me in a filthy box and I know there's going to be all types of crap that builds up on those portions that are not covered fully by the jewel. And there's going to be debris and dust that, that gets into those, uh, exposed jewels that we can all see. Huh, look at that. You know, yeah, so, you know, apparently, I thought that was way too much oil, you know, obviously, you know, it's going to flood it out. Uh, that's not something you would normally want to do. That, that was purely an accident, because uh, I had touched my fingers with it. But, on these jewels, here and here, and here, those were exposed. And being exposed... Uh, you can see the shaft that the gears, train wheels, go into, you know, were probably flooded and caked with some dust. And that's what was hindering the, mo the movement was, the, was those exposed sections of the train wheels, uh, axles with the jewels. So that much oil that accidentally went on there flushed that debris out and that has reduced the friction to the point where it will now run. But apparently it's not enough. Because as you can see, it has stopped. So. I think my next step is. We're going to go ahead and we're going to oil the escape wheel, which has its own opening here. And then there's the balance right there. Now, keeping in with that, we know that those jewels are not waterproof. And my theory of this is that I can remove those jewels, be very gently... And I can clean them with a little bit of vinegar and then dunk it in a little bit of water and, and, and dry and insert them back in. Boy, and those are very small jewels. So I can do that. Yeah, and it has stopped again. So let's do that next. Let's do that. And I want to make sure that you can all still see what's going on. There we go. I'm sorry if y'all cannot see every little thing. I'm still working on my perspective of the camera where it needs to be. So...
I stopped that on purpose. Oh, this is very, very fine work, as you can imagine. It's so hard to do with the camera, too, damn it. You know, I don't see any dust underneath those jewels. You know, most of the time when you're going to be doing that with any type of watch, you're going to have dust underneath the jewels. I don't really see that on this watch, which is good. I mean, there's no doubt about that. That's good. So, I'm going to go for this anyway. Bring it right about there. There's that. I don't like using the screwdriver. I just don't. Okay. So, okay. Don't particularly care for that too much at all. I'm being gentle. Perhaps I'm being too gentle. But hey, you know, this like potentially a $700 watch movement. So I want to be extraordinarily careful with this. I can move that. At the same time, I want to be very careful with it. And I'm also always worrying about that little piece flying off. And I've never worked on such a tiny little movement before. Not like this. So let me come in here. Let me be, let me baby it. To baby this just for a minute. Ugh. 
And I'm basically just copying the mistake that I did that turned out that got this thing running in the first place. So I dumped some oil on it. And yes, 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 those that are more experienced than I understand that this is basically like putting oil in sandpaper and grains of sand and stuff, blah, blah, blah. I get that. I will eventually break this down. Right now, I'm just tinkering with it because I want it to run. And I see it going. I'm sure it has the potential to stop again. At some point during the process of this. And yes, I understand I'm not supposed to touch it with my fingers either. But, you know, this is my watch. So I, I do as I please. And it's still running. It's good. Where did that Rotico? Do I have any Rotico around here? I want to say I got some somewhere, but I'm not sure how to, good a condition it's in. And so on and so forth. Blah, blah, blah. But, okay, I'll look for some Rotico so I can move that jewel. I wouldn't mind taking the jewel out of the balance and cleaning it at least. But uh, stopping along the way... I do have some diamonds here. I may try to figure a way to incorporate that into this. Thinking about that anyway. I mean, why not, right? Might as well. I'm not sure if it's stopping and going or if it's just keep on going. But this looks just like just a smaller version of any uh, 15 Jewel Rolex watch movement that I've seen. Really? It's going. Oh, I need to see if I got any Rodico. I know I had some somewhere. It was wrapped up in cellophane. I really need to clean my watch area, too. I haven't done a build or anything in a little bit of time. I wouldn't mind doing a build. I got some new equipment in. Part of the new equipment that I got would be uh, this. You know, for removing uh, crystals. I have a little drill set that doesn't seem to work very well at all. Oh, and I hear the wife coming out. Okay. Looking for my Rodico. I know my Rodico's around here somewhere. I got Pop's watch sitting over here too. Hey, Pop's, I'm still waiting on your crystal, dude. I think I got a solution for it, though. I'm going to try it today. Rodico, Rodico, where are you? Uh oh, no Rodico. I don't see any more Rodico. Where are you at? Damn. Fuck me. Well, I'm not gonna be able to get that jewel out without my Rodico. I mean, I, I guess I could, but I mean, damn. Would I even really want to try that with tweezers? <laughs> I've never seen it done. Okay. I am looking for my Rodico. And at the same time, knocking over the camera. Oh, I really should be prepared for videos like this. And it's still running, isn't it? That's, that's very good. Oh, okay, that's the wife. Oh, my. I think I have to cut the video short for a minute. Go check on her and see if she needs anything. And blah, 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 blah. But, okay, anyway, uh, yeah, I'm going to clean up my desk, come back to this, but we'll just call this video just fiddling, shall we? Because, hey, you know, it's running. I don't see it stopping now. Okay, we'll stick it on a 
just for shits and giggles, I'll put it on my timograph to see what it's doing. You know, whatever. But in the meantime, I guess I'll clean up, clean up a little bit, find my Rodico, and we'll come back and we'll do an actual breakdown video. Sounds good to me. But hey, guys, thanks for watching this. Uh, even though it seems pointless at times, at least you get to see the watch movement doing quite well. We'll go ahead and stick it in a container. I'll come back to it here in my next video. But uh, yeah, seems I need to locate my Rodico because I would prefer to have it. Oh, it looks like it is still stopping a little bit, doesn't it? Yep. Oh, yeah, it sure is. Oh. Yeah, here the wife. Ah, damn. Okay. Yeah, plus I want to find a pen anyway. I want to find a pen. <clears throat> I don't want to use my screwdriver on this. And I need my rod of code to remove the jewel. I'm not going to do that with tweezers. I can just see that jewel flying across the desk, never be found again. <laughs> Then I'll have to order another jewel or match up another jewel. And oh, yeah, 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 we'll plan this out. All right, guys, we'll come back with a much better planned uh, breakdown of this movement. But okay, yeah, looks like uh, I'll just go ahead and just start breaking it down and we'll start cleaning it. Sounds good to me.